Okay, welcome to a short macro video looking at the concept of real interest rates. So the real interest rate is the nominal or the money rate of interest on loans or savings adjusted for the rate of inflation. Quick example, if inflation is running at 4%, if prices are rising by 4% a year, and let's say the interest rate on the loan in nominal terms is 6%, then the real interest rate is 6 minus 4, that equals plus 2%. We would say that real interest rates on that loan were positive. The lender will get a positive real return, providing that loan is repaid. Now, Ketris Paribus, all other factors held constant, a higher real interest rate is good for savers, because the return they're getting is better than inflation, but not so good for borrowers, particularly borrowers who've taken out big loans. We say they're highly leveraged. Perhaps they've taken out a very big mortgage relative to their incomes. Now, crucially, real interest rates can be negative if the annual rate of inflation is greater than the nominal rate of interest on savings and loans. Let's take a look at an example. This chart shows uh, the rate of inflation in orange for the UK from 2007 through to the spring of 2019. The source of the data is the Bank of England. The blue line shows the average rate of interest on site deposits. That's things like money in a current account where you've got a debit card and can take out money immediately without loss of interest. But notice that in, from 2008 onwards, the rate of interest on savings in the UK collapsed from around 3% to, well, 1% or less. And indeed, for more than a decade, savers have faced very low nominal interest rates which means, of course, that the real interest rate that they've been getting for the best part of a decade or more has been negative. And that's the gap between the orange line inflation and the blue line on savings. Explain two possible economic effects of negative real interest rates for savers. Well, one is that there's a reduced incentive to save because the real returns are negative. People therefore maybe have a higher marginal propensity to consume if they get extra income. And we may well see a fall in the household savings ratio, which is savings as a percentage of disposable income. Now, low savings <clears throat> could be a problem if the economy enters another recession or, as we're seeing at the moment, is suffering from the external shock of the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus uh, situation. Lots of households in this country have very limited savings. Uh, many of them are only one big bill away from having to borrow money. Second effect of negative real interest rates for depositors could be an outflow of hot money from the UK commercial banking system. You see, overseas investors tend to put their money in countries where they have the best positive real expected return. So if UK interest rates are negative in real terms on savings, that might lead to an outflow of money from the, hot, from the, from the banking system, an outflow of hot money, uh, an increased supply of pounds in the currency markets, and this might then lead to a depreciation of the sterling exchange rate. Uh, interest rates can be negative in real terms. The current Bank of England base rate is now just 0.25%. It was cut on the 11th of March 2020 by one half of 1% by the Bank of England, who were injecting a monetary stimulus into the economy to help lift cash flow for households and small businesses, particularly those affected by the impact of the coronavirus effects. So with inflation at just under 2%, the real base rate of interest is negative and has been for some time. But keep in mind that many people who borrow money on a mortgage, an overdraft, uh, for example, they face much higher nominal interest rates than this. <clears throat> so the real interest rate for those people remains positive. There we go, a quick primer on real interest rates.